In the last video, I showed you how to fell this tree using this ax. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to remove the limbs from the tree, again, using this ax. And it's a technique that will work on pretty much any fallen tree. So you'll see this process referred to as either something called snedding, which is what you tend to see more often in the UK and Scandinavia and in some of the old Norse countries and Europe generally, or something called limbing, which is tends to be a North American word. It's effectively the same thing, or at least for the purposes of this tutorial, it's the same thing. It's the process of removing the limbs or the side branches from the main trunk of a tree, often with an ax, but you can do it with a chainsaw. That's what we're gonna do here. We're going to remove the branches from this Western hemlock spruce, which I have just felled with this ax, and we're gonna do so in a methodical and careful manner in order to remain safe. Because this is one of those things that, if you do it properly, is really quite simple. But if you do it in the wrong way, or you don't take care, you can land yourself in hospital or bleeding out on the forest floor quite easily. So I'm gonna show you some of the really simple steps to do it. And this is, it is a simple process, as long as you take care. But the two things that you need to be aware of are body position and patience. You need to position your body so that the ax isn't going to end up buried in your leg or in your arm or elsewhere in your body. And you need to have patience because you'll need to keep swapping from one side of the tree to another, changing your body position, changing your grip, looking at things carefully and not rushing through. So let's get on with the first of those things, that body position. So with a tree like this, you've probably got branches all the way around, but the branches on the underside mostly got crunched when the tree fell over or at least got driven into the ground. So I don't have to worry about them just yet. I can deal with those once I've cross cut and rolled the tree over. So normally you only have to deal with the branches sticking out like that, like that, or from above. So you can't just deal with all the branches on one side, then all the branches on the other, and then the up upper branches because other branches will be in the way. So you will have to keep chopping over from one side to the next. You need to ideally keep the tree between you and the ax. So we've already got a video on the basics of ax safety and everything in that video, this video here, applies to this job that I'm about to perform. So what I'm gonna do is keep this ax on one side of the tree and I'm gonna take off this branch here and I'm gonna stand on this side. I'm not going to stand here and chop like that because if I miss or even if I follow through correctly this axe could come over the branch over the tree and hit me in the leg which is generally considered to be a bad thing. If I cut there and I'm level with the branch or even slightly in front of it then even if I miss or if I'm completely successful and accurate in my swing it will go off into clean, clean safe space over there. This also means that nobody can wor be working down there because I might hit them with the axe, but that's something you can manage. And the other thing is I'm cutting from the root of the tree towards the tip. I don't cut in that direction, I cut from the root towards the tip. That's because that's the most efficient and quickest way to do it. If you cut from the tip down towards the root, you're going to be taking big chunks out of the tree, the axe is going to snag in that V of the branch there, and you're gonna end up with more problems. Whereas if you cut from the root towards the tip, then it should go fairly well. I'm gonna be aware of my body position, I'm gonna be aware of the swing, and I'm gonna be aware of where the ax is in relation to the tree and my body. So, should just cut through, like that. And I can do the next one, and so on. So I've got branches on this side here, which are still in the way. I can step over, move my body position and take them off like that. And then that's all I do. I just work down the tree from the base towards the tip, changing sides from one side to the other and keep taking the branches off. But eventually I'm gonna come across one of these branches which is sticking straight up, like all of these down here. So I'm gonna to have to come up with a slightly different technique in order to deal with them. Here you're gonna to want to do something slightly different. So I've got branches sticking almost out of the top, they're kind of to one side like that. But I've got some purely vertical ones further down the tree there. You can't really attack it from either side because it's sticking up pretty much where your ax swing is going to be. You could stand to one side and crouch and go for a sideways cut like that. And that would work absolutely fine. What I 
prefer to do, particularly if I'm working on my own and I need to be extra cautious and extra safe because the, the penalties for failure are higher, then I will do something like this. I'll kneel down and I'll set myself a little bit further away from the tree so that with my length of axe, I can basically only hit that or miss, but I can't actually get the axe to hit my own body. So I'm pretty much as safe as I can be. And then I'm just going to work on focusing on each branch individually and work through again from the base towards the tip and just cut through each branch until I'm at a point where I can stand up again and go back to zigzagging down the tree. So it should work something like this. And that's about it. This technique will work for some of the branches that are sticking straight down into the ground, particularly where you've got a gap like that. Something to be aware of with that is these branches might be what's actually keeping the log and the tree up off the ground. So if you want to keep it at a nice, easy working height and give yourself space to work, so you're not burying your ax in the mud every time you swing, then you might want to leave those branches until the very last bit of work you do on the tree. So that's it. Now we just work away from the bottom of the tree towards the tip, taking the branches off by moving from one side of the tree to the other and adopting a different technique like kneeling or standing off to one side and crouching where that's not possible. But at all times, making sure we're aware of where the cutting tool is, where it's likely to end up if we miss or if we follow on through that cut and that where possible, we keep the tree between us and the cutting tool. And you can't rush this. It takes however long it takes. If you rush, you're going to greatly increase the chances of injuring yourself. And if you're out here on your own or in the middle of nowhere, then the penalties for failure are much, much higher than if you were doing this, say, outside an accident and emergency bay at a local hospital. So I'm just going to do that now. I'm going to work my way down the rest of this tree, taking off the branches and hopefully ending up with a relatively smooth trunk. <laughs> So at some point you're gonna to get to this kind of situation where you've ended up with a tree that is pretty much too narrow to do anything with. This is nearly at the top of the tree. I've got about two meters left there, but that's all wiggly, thin stuff. It's not usable for what I want this tree for. So rather than cut all these branches off and then have to cross cut or saw this off later on, what I can do is use a similar technique and just cut off through here like this was a big branch. So this isn't quite the same as the cross cutting we'll show you in the next video, but it effectively does the same thing. It shortens this tree and makes it the length that we want it to, or at least saves a lot of needless work there. So when you get to that kind of point, you decide which side you're gonna cut from, you position your body accordingly, and then just with a couple of sharp swings, you swing through, make sure you adhere to those same safety principles at all times, but just swing through and cut off the top of the tree there. So it should look something like this. There we go. And that's all the way through. Right, I can go and drag this off now. So that's it. As I keep saying, it's a really simple job. As long as you follow a few simple safety rules, you take your time, then you should get through this job without any drama. You need a sharp ax. You need to make sure that you're careful about your body position. You need to make sure that you plan ahead a little bit and decide, do I need to stand here? Do I need to stand here? Do I need to kneel for this one? And decide how the tree is lying. You also need to be aware of things like tension in the branches. If the branches are caught up amongst other trees or it's a more complicated tree than this one, you need to be aware of any tension that might be there in a branch you're about to cut through. If you cut through it, is it about to spring back and grab at you or throw the ax out of your hand? You need to be aware of these kind of things. So plan ahead, take your time, and even with those considerations, it should only take you a few minutes to clear a simple tree like this with a sharp ax. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to cross cut it, how to cut this tree to a more useful length or a length that's easier to work with. And again, I'm gonna do that with the ax. So go and watch that video, that's online now. We've got all these other videos here about how to fell the tree, ax safety, and a few other things. 
If you have any questions or comments, put them in the comments below. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. We have other videos, other tutorials, other gear reviews. We have lots of stuff over at originaloutdoors.co.uk on the blog there. We also run training courses. We work with all sorts of interesting people you can read about there. And if you just want to sit back and watch the next video, then that's fine. If you want to let us know what you think about the videos, that's fine too. Well, whatever you're going to do next. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching the video to this far in and I'll see you again next time. Bye.